Hello everybody, my name is Ron Martinez. Today I want to motivate a control system based on the sleep model. So I'm just going to present very quickly the sleep model, how we can use it to model running and walking. <coughs> then I'm going to show you how I was studying this model in order to see running and walking and transitions in the same representation. And based on these results, I'm going to motivate a control strategy. And afterwards, I'm going to give you some conclusions. So the sleep model, uh, you are assuming that all the mass is at the hip. You don't have masses of the legs. And the legs are just springs. I'm using this model because it reproduces the ground reaction forces in running or walking. And um, you can represent um, walking and running with different phases. Walking is, is going to have one stance phase and one double stance phase, while running is going to have one stance phase and one uh, flight phase. Both behaviors are sharing the single stance phase. And I'm going to use this one to study walking and running. Basically, it's going to be a section. This section is defined when the stance phase is perpendicular against the ground. And at this point, the system is going to be defined by the compression of, of the spring, the vertical velocity, and the forward velocity. This model is conservative. So we know the energy it is not going to change. So at the end, we just need one velocity and the compression of the spring. By can be used to, to identify very quickly the um, symmetric gates. So this is the velocity that I'm going to use. So um, all the initial conditions of the system are going to lay in a, on an ellipsoid that is going to be defined by the energy. So in order to study these systems, basically what I'm going to build are some, a couple of maps that are mapping the, the initial conditions from this section to the section. And these maps are defined by the gate that I'm using and the angle of attack. The angle of attack is measured between the, the ground and the landing um, leg of the step. So this is how it looks. So all the initial conditions are going to be in this ellipsoid. And you can see that here, you, where you have these red dots, you can, the system can perform the running behavior. And here, where you have the blue dots, it, uh, the system can perform a walking behavior. What is nice is that here in BY0, you can have the symmetric gain. And the message here is that in most of the initial conditions that you can imagine, you can find an angle of attack that is going to map the system again in the symmetric gate. We can also look at um, the initial conditions that can bring the system from running to walking or from rocking, walking to running. As we can see here, these initial conditions of, of walking, if you select an appropriate angle of attack, can bring the system to running. Here is the simulation. Where it's shown, where we're using this picture here. So the system starts to run, then you can change the angles of attack to, to make the system walk. There are different kinds of walking that you can produce with this model. And then you can go back to running again. So if you take this into account, if you have this kind of system or if the robot behaves like that, you can create these kind of landscapes. Landscapes where you know that the system is able to run, landscapes where the system is able to, to walk. And then just based in, in the initial condition, in the S section, you can decide what, what, what do you want to do the system. For example, here, Basically, I'm, I'm making the system to go to, I'm forcing the system to keep the same compression, producing an asymmetric gait. Here is an example. You can create this kind of crazy gates just using the, that information. So you can compress the, the whole information of the dynamical system with these landscapes, and then just look for the angle of attack that is going to change um, the future in the S section. And you can also use the information from 
the transitions. And you can make the, wrong, the, the system go from the transition to the walking to the transition of running and combine walking and running to produce the hopping game like I just presented. So the problem is, okay, you have a system like that, you have this landscape that you produce with the, um, with the model of the system, but what about if you change, for example, the mass? Then it's going to be a problem because then you have to generate again the landscapes. Well, there, there is a solution. You, um, it's, given that if you have this the dynamical system, you can uh, non-dimensionalize the, the differential equations. And if, if you do that, then you will realize that there is a non-dimensional number that defines the dynamics of the system. Therefore, if you change, for example, the mass, you can just change the constant of elasticity of the leg. And if you do that, then you keep the same dynamics. And then you can keep the same strategy to control the behavior. And um, just for conclusion, I, I think that if you have a representation that allows you to see all the behaviors that it was presented here, where you see where the system can run, walk, how it can do transitions, we can develop new strategies that can um, bring this kind of uh, robot locomotion to, to our robots. And then we can exploit the passive dynamics of the system. And I believe that all these models should uh, be developed in order to understand the interaction that um, is happening in the locomotion process. Um, thanks. What you're going to change is a, is a little bit the, the size of the, the landscape. And there is a region uh, where you can have these behaviors, but um, it's, it doesn't change much if you change the, the compliance of the system. It change a bit, but not too much. The, the, the shape or what you can see is most of it is stable. It doesn't change much. When you change the energy, what happens is that the, the running starts to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you decrease the energy, what happens is the, the walking starts to be bigger and bigger. Change a little bit the distribution of half here. This is kind of what happens when you change the energy. is one day that the reason you just have to generate it once and then if you change this for example the mass of the system then you just try to change the stiffness because you cannot calculate these maps online but when you have these landscapes then it's it's kind of easy because you know what kind of behavior you can do you know where you should go in order to induce transition and so so the decisions that you have to do for the system is going to be easier Question down there. Uh, is there any evidence of animal systems uh, that in a similar way to your your Okay, okay, that, that's a good question. Here, this, this is the, the study that I'm, I'm doing right now. Here I am assuming this kind of controller. And uh, what, what I'm finding here is a robust region. It's a region where this, I know the system is going to perform running for um, all the time it wants. And what, what I'm identifying here is that the criteria for transition is robustness. So for, for low energy, low speed, walking is really robust. Then I'm going to have a gap of energies 
where both are possible. And then, and for higher energies, then the, the robust is, um, is right. And what, what is really nice is that I can predict things like the prime number, changes in the oscillation of the heap. I can also show that there is a hopping gate. And um, I, I can also show, for example, um, the gate transitions with these kind of assumptions in humans. Okay, we have time for uh, two more questions. Go ahead. There are some conditions. What I have here is that uh, there are some, some regions where um, this, this non-dimensional number has to be satisfied. So if you have some conditions for your mass, some, con some conditions for your height, that is going to define the level of compliance that your robot should have in order to have this kind of behavior. If you have the same non-dimensional number, this is what is going to happen. Let's allow a slippery question. Uh, yeah, one more question. Uh, okay. Is is there some sort of consistency in the structure of the maps that you're generating that might allow you to only actually hard calculate a portion of the map and then extrapolate other sections of it on the fly? That's why you need to cut down cut down your overall. Yeah. What, what I was thinking is that, for example, if, if you have a what I was trying is that, for example, if you are calculating these maps for every 10 joules, probably with this information, you can create the maps in between. That, 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 that may work. And is that something you're planning on researching going forward? Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the strategies that I'm trying to study at this moment. Yeah, let's stop here. Okay. Let's